I have always dreamed of traveling to Japan and exploring a country full of ancient culture and modern technology. I especially wanted to see the bustling downtown area of Tokyo and the breathtaking view of Mount Fuji. So, I planned a two-week-long trip. I still vividly remember it was the afternoon of March 11, 2011. I was in a small town in the southern part of Fukushima Prefecture, preparing to depart for Tokyo. I was sitting on the balcony of my hotel, breathing deeply in the fresh air. Suddenly, a strong tremor came and shook me off the balcony and onto the ground. I was completely unable to control my body and even standing became a huge challenge. After a few seconds, I began to see some windows shatter and nearby buildings shake. People began to run in panic and I began to feel panic. However, the most frightening thing was that the quake seemed to be getting stronger and stronger, like a giant shaking the earth with force. I could feel the ground trembling, buildings swaying, and I could even hear trees, poles, and other objects swaying. Some people started yelling and screaming, some ran around in panic, but most people calmly tried to find cover. I tried to escape as well, but as I turned to leave, a huge piece of wall crashed down on top of me and I was trapped in the rubble. As I was pinned down, I felt intense pain and a sense of suffocation. It became difficult for me to breathe and I even risked having my ribs crushed. I felt I could not move, could not call for help, and could not get any help. At this point, I began to feel a sense of desperation that I had never felt before. I thought about my family and friends, what they would think and what they would do. I thought about how my life was coming to an end and how I would not be able to fulfill my unfulfilled dreams and plans. In this situation, a sense of despair and helplessness began to permeate my mind. I began to feel fear and loneliness, and I felt that I was about to die. And this feeling would be too much for anyone to bear. Yet, even in this extreme situation, I was still unwilling to give up. I tried to stay calm and hope to be found, even if it was only a faint hope. I kept calling out and praying that I would survive and be reunited with my family and friends. I was unwilling to give up on life, even if the feelings of despair and helplessness were strong. Slowly, my consciousness became more and more blurred. I began to close my eyes. I don't know how long it took. I felt my weight suddenly become lighter, as if an invisible force had rescued me from the rubble. I was brought into a light where the light was so bright and pure that I felt a peace and calmness I had never felt before. I felt my body was wrapped in this light, as if a precious treasure was being cared for. This light had a healing and soothing power that made me feel less alone and helpless. I heard a gentle voice, a voice I had never heard before, but I knew it was God speaking to me. He told me, Son, it is safe here. That voice was so kind. As I was surrounded by that voice, my heart was warmed and healed. I felt my fear and despair disappear and be replaced by a stronger and better power. In the light of that radiance, I felt completely healed and redeemed in my mind and body. The beauty and holiness of this light reminded me of the heaven depicted in the Bible. The intensity of the light did not make me feel uncomfortable, on the contrary, it gave me a feeling of peace and tranquility. In the midst of the light, I saw a figure with infinite power and infinite love. The silhouette of the figure became clearer and I began to recognize the figure as God. Although I had never seen God with my own eyes, I knew that this was Him, and my heart was filled with gratitude and joy. God and I communicated for a long time. I asked God, why couldn't you have prevented the disaster from happening? God replied, my child, it is not that I cannot prevent disasters from happening. But I also cannot prevent the free will of human choices. 
Feeling challenged in my understanding, I asked, the free will of mankind to choose? What does that mean? God replied, when I created humans, I gave them free will, which is a divine and precious gift. But free will also means that humans need to be responsible for their own choices and actions. I thought for a moment and then asked, but why should those innocent people who had no choice in this earthquake suffer like this? God was silent for a moment and then said, My child, earthquakes and other natural disasters are not directly caused by me. These are forces of nature that operate in their own orbit. But when these disasters occur, I will be there, and I will lead those who suffer out of the darkness and bring them strength and hope. Later, God took me to another place. Here, I felt peace. Countless flowers and trees emanated fragrance and life. God took me through a beautiful meadow. I saw my loved ones who had passed away. They were all dressed in white and looked very happy and peaceful. They gazed at me with familiar and warm eyes, as if welcoming me. My mood felt an inexplicable joy because I knew they were now well and free from any pain. There, I met my grandmother. She looked at me with tenderness and care, as she always did. We hugged each other. She told me that she was always watching over me, always by my side. She made me feel her presence and love, which gave me great comfort and relief. In heaven, I also met other family members and friends. My grandmother took me by the hand and said, I will take you for a stroll. I was amazed by the sight before me. In this beautiful world, tall palaces and towers stood on the distant horizon, emanating a dazzling light. They appeared to be made of pure gold, and each building was beautifully detailed and decorated, as if they had come out of a fairy tale. Surrounding the palaces and towers are spacious parks and squares. All kinds of flowers and trees can be seen everywhere. The branches of the trees sway gently in the breeze. And the petals of the flowers float down on the heads of people. There are some animals running and playing in the distance, and some flying birds soaring in the air, making people feel incomparable harmony and freedom. People were enjoying the beauty of life in the parks and squares as they strolled hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder in this wonderland. Everyone's face was smiling with happiness and contentment, as if they were all enjoying the real life and love in paradise. The buildings and sights in heaven are so gorgeous that one cannot imagine. There, people can really enjoy the beauty of life and feel the real joy and love. I wanted to stay here and never leave. But then God's voice suddenly rang out, Son, you need to go back. I turned around and saw God, Why, God? I want to stay here. I asked. God looked at me with a smile and said, My child, you have an important task to accomplish. You need to return to earth and continue your life's journey. Your life has many more values and meanings, and you need to fulfill them. I felt a little confused, but, God, this place is so beautiful and I don't want to leave it. I know, son, but your time has not yet come. You need to finish your mission on earth and then come back here. This is your true home, and you can always come back. I nodded my head in understanding feeling a sense of comfort and strength from God's words. I began to understand that although heaven was so beautiful and peaceful, earth had its own value and meaning, and I needed to go back to complete my mission. Thank you, God. I will go back and try to do my job. I said. God smiled, nodded, and said to me, I know, son. I will always be there for you, to give you strength and guidance. Now, go back, your journey through life awaits you. I bowed deeply, then turned and left heaven to begin a new journey of life.
As I returned to my body, I felt myself slowly descending. I felt the weight and pressure of my body, as if I was being drawn back into the real world by some force. The moment I realized I was back in my body, I felt an intense pain hit my body, like a wire connected directly to my nervous system. My body began to tremble and I felt my heart beat faster and my breath catch. Then I saw a beam of light that gradually appeared in front of my eyes. This light became brighter and brighter. I felt my soul returning to my body, and the light seemed to be a mysterious energy that brought me back to consciousness. I knew that if I didn't do something, I might not survive. I started looking around for a source of water. At the time of the earthquake, I was on my balcony and there happened to be a sprinkler next to me for watering the flowers. I carefully drank every drop of water and used it to moisten my throat. Two days had passed and I was so weak that I could hardly breathe. Just when I thought I was at the end of my life, I heard the voices of the rescuers. They finally found me. They finally found me and used an excavator to get me out. Later, I was admitted to the hospital. I didn't experience any serious problems except for my body showing symptoms of dehydration. An earthquake is a terrible disaster that will take the lives and homes of many people without mercy. I survived the earthquake, and this experience made me feel how fragile and precious life is. At the time of the earthquake, I felt fear and despair, and it felt like the whole world was crumbling. I am so thankful that God was there and that he gave me the motivation to keep going. When I survived, I felt more moved and relieved than ever before. I realized that life is so fragile and we must cherish it. The days I spent in the ruins made me understand more about my life and the meaning of my existence. The material things and power that people seek are not important, what really matters is our humanity and the care and help we give to others. The impressions left by this experience will stay with me for the rest of my life. I value what I have more and respect life and others. Later I realized the magnitude of this earthquake. It brought devastation to the lives and homes of millions of people. Thousands of people lost their lives in this earthquake. They included my Japanese friends and those I had never met. I feel very sad because the loss of these people has caused irreparable pain to their families and their country. Although they are gone, we will not forget them. We will remember their lives and their sacrifice, as well as those who worked so hard and dedicatedly to save lives. We are grateful to the rescuers and volunteers who showed the light of humanity in this disaster.